Sugarcane is the main source of sugar in India and holds a prominent position as a cash crop. India is the world's largest consumer and the second largest producer of sugar, topped only by Brazil. Nearly 2.8 lakh farmers have been cultivating sugarcane in the vast area of 4.4 lakh acres and over 11 crore people are directly or indirectly dependent on the sugar industry in the country. Sugarcane is one of the important commercial crops of India, grown in an area of 3.93 million hectares with an annual production of 170 metric ton. Sugarcane productivity in India is around 67 tons per hectare. It is one of the most important food cum cash crops grown in the country, providing employment to a larger number of people, in addition to earning considerable foreign exchange. In this video, we will give complete information on sugarcane farming. Hi friends. Welcome to Discover Agriculture YouTube channel. If you're not yet subscribed to our channel, please subscribe now. Climate Requirements Sugarcane is able to grow over a prolonged season. Under warm humid conditions, it can continue its growth, unless terminated by flowering. Temperatures above 50 degrees Celsius arrest its growth, those below 20 degrees Celsius slow it down markedly and severe frost prove fatal. The crop does best in the tropical regions receiving a rainfall of 750 to 1200 mm. For ripening, it needs a cool, dry season, but where rainfall is too heavy and prolonged, the quality of the juice tends to be low, and where the weather remains comparatively. Soil Requirements Sugarcane grows best on medium-heavy soils, but can also be raised on lighter soils and heavy clays, provided there is adequate irrigation available in the former type of soils and drainage as good in the latter type of soils. In many places, dark rich clay loams, 120 to 150 centimeters deep, and lying on a previous substratum of murum are used for this crop. Varieties CO419, CO740, CO7219, it is also known as Sanjeevani. COM7125, CO7527, COM88121 a 7714, CO8014, it is also known as Mahalakshmi. CO86032, it is also known as Nera. COC671, COC85061, CO8011, COM7114, COSI776. Seed Treatment The availability of good quality cane seed materials from a nursery crop of 10 to 11 months is essential for better germination and good growth. The treatments included were namely control, 0.05% Bavistan, 2.5% urea, 2.5% KCL, 2.5% KCL plus urea, 1% hadron. Two budded sets were used for planting after treating with the above chemicals. Also, hot water treatment is given to prevent seed bond diseases. Sowing method. Planting of sugarcane is done in three seasons that is Suru January February, Adshali, July August and pre-seasonal October November for planting generally ridges and furrows are prepared on 100 to 120 cm spacing. For planting of 1 hectare area 25 to 30,000 3i budded cane sets are required. Fertilizer requirements. Adequate manuring is essential for sustained high yields. The general recommendation in most places is to apply half to two-thirds of the nitrogen in the form of bulky organic manures, such as farmyard manure, compost, green manure, or tree leaves, and the remainder in the form of ammonium sulfate or oil cakes or a combination of the two. For sugarcane, fertilizer is recommended according to planting season and it is varied from growing tract to tract. In general for Suru sugarcane 250 is to 115 is to 115. For Adshali 400 is to 170 is to 170 and for pre-seasonal 340 is to 170 is to 170 kg nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash per hectare is recommended respectively. For retuning 250 is to 115 is to 115 kg nitrogen, phosphorus and potash per hectare is recommended. Irrigation Methods Water the requirement of sugarcane varies from 2000 to 2500 mm depending upon its duration, soil type, and climatological factors. For sugarcane germination, tillering, grand growth, and maturity are the critical stages for irrigation. 
During the germination phase, 1 to 35 days, there should be enough moisture in the soil for better germination but waterlogging is undesirable as it leads to the rotting of sets. During this period irrigation can be scheduled at weekly intervals. But irrigation at 10 days interval during tillering stage 36 to 100 days is sufficient. The formative and grand growth stages 101 to 270 days are the critical stages for water demand. During this period irrigation can be practiced at weekly intervals. At the maturity phase 271 days to harvest fortnightly irrigation is enough. Irrigation will have to be stopped at 15 days prior to harvest. Mulching. In the early days, application of paddy straw or spreading of sugarcane trash in the field will decrease the evaporation and thus decrease the water demand of the crop besides improving the yield. Hoeing and earthing up. The first hoeing and weeding should be given to the crop 3 to 4 weeks after planting. After germination, depending on the field conditions and the frequency of irrigation, two or three more hoeings and weedings may be required during the first three months after planting with the coming up of the crop. The final earthing up should be completed before the monsoon rains, and should generally synchronize with the application of the final dose of fertilizer. This helps to keep down the weeds. Tying of cane. It is very desirable to tie up the canes so that they may not sway during the winds and lodge. The best way to do the thing is to bring together the stalks from adjacent rows and tie them together with their own trash and old leaves. In many places cane is tied at two or three levels with twists of cane trash, the twisting going from one end of the row to the other, sometimes the stalks are further propped up with bamboos. Pests problem in sugarcane farming. Termites, early shoot borer, intinode borer are major pests in sugarcane farming. Visit nearby KVK to no control measures of these pests. Diseases in sugarcane farming. Red rot, whip smut, grassy shoot diseases are main diseases in sugarcane farming. Take guidance from local KVK scientists to get rid of these diseases. Harvesting and yield. Assessing the maturity of the cane crop. The maturity of sugarcane is generally recognized by the lower leaves gradually withering up and leaving progressively fewer green leaves at the top. A ripe cane, out across with a sharp knife, shows against sunlight a slight sparkling in its flesh in contrast to the more watery cut surface of an unripe cane. If the grower can keep and use a hand sugar refractometer, the testing of maturity would be easier. The hand refractometer reading of 20, the cane crop may be considered to have reached the stage of maturity. Small mill test, SMT, will be a real solution for this perennial problem. For conducting SMT, few canes, say about 10 canes, have to be cut from the field and the samples are analyzed after crushing the cane in a small mill for pole, bricks, purity and CCS percent in the laboratory which clearly gives the maturity status of the cane. Harvesting system and harvesting unit. The cooperative generally begins the sugarcane harvest about the 1st of November and continues for an average of 150 days. The sugarcane harvest is a timed and coordinated undertaking to allow for maximum utilization of the mill's grinding capacity. At present, the harvesting and supply of sugarcane is done by the farmers after receiving the cutting orders from the factory authorities. The cutting orders are issued depending upon the date of planting is found in the records and agreement between the farmers and factory. This system will not hold well, as the uniform maturity of the cane crop can't be controlled even by planting early maturing varieties in the early season. In a typical harvesting unit, three or four harvesters operate in tandem with six to eight tractors and strings of wagons. The huge machines contain rotating knives, which cut the sugar cane at the base of the stalk. The cane tops are also cut off by rotating knives and the excess foliage is removed by giant extraction fans. As the sugarcane passes through the harvester, it is cut into 12-inch lengths called billets and then put into infield wagons. The sugarcane is then hauled to nearby transfer stations and loaded into semi-trailers for delivery. Yield in sugarcane farming. The average yield of an 11 to 12-month-old plant crop under commercial cultivation is 100 tons per hectare in case of Suru, 170 tons per hectare for Adshali and 120 tons per hectare in case of pre-seasonal sugarcane. This farming method may help a lot of farmers. Share this video with your all friends. We need your support to do this kind of work. Your likes and comments will motivate us to do more work. Please do like and comment your thoughts. It may boost the YouTube algorithm and it will help to reach more farmers. Please do subscribe our channel and click the bell icon to get notifications whenever we publish the videos. Thank you for watching this video.
Have a great day.